Morning, folks. Another episode of Burning Platform. A real pleasure to have Jill Popelka today from Success Factors. And we're going to talk about our new book, Experience Inc. Jill, so great to have you on the show. Thank you so much. And God, you're smiling. You've obviously had a great morning already. So tell us a little bit about the book. Came out, what, last week? I mean, it's fresh off the off the press. Vinny, one of the things I'm very excited about is that we did make the Wall Street Journal bestseller list last week. It was number three on the uh, business hardback list. And so very excited oh to be recognized week, by the Wall Street Journal. Week one, congratulations. Week one. Yeah, fresh out. Well, first of all, Vinny, thank you so much for having me. Pleasure to be here talking with you this morning. Always fun. Um, the book went on sale May 3rd. Uh, I'd been working on it for a couple of years, realized during the pandemic that I was really missing human connection. Just the the inspiration, the creativity, the engagement um, that, that really comes with humans being together, right? Uh, so I started to study that, started to explore it, thinking about experiences that I had had and I realized that there were a lot of strategies that, that companies, leaders, managers can employ right now to recreate that human connection, even in a remote environment, but to focus on the principles that we know to be true, like how important it is to have purpose, um, understanding your connection to the purpose of your company, how important it is to have ownership within your employee base so that the employees feel like they own their careers, like they, they are the CEOs of their world, of their scope, and that they can also develop their careers in the direction that they want. Want to make sure that there's still that sense of community, even if we're sitting in our home offices, we want to make sure that people feel connected to something and that they're um, valued, that they know that they're valued as part of your company. So, um, I, you know, I really wanted to write this down so that you could hear from employees directly, so that business leaders could hear how employees are feeling. And there are some great employee stories out there, good and bad uh, examples. Um, but also to remind you that you don't have to spend millions and millions of dollars uh, to get this right, to get it right today. Well, Jill, you know, a lot of people during the pandemic, it's been a terrifying time for them. They've kind of been scared or negative or uh, fearful. I mean, just very negative vibes, right? Mm -hmm. I've tried to stay positive by focusing on a lot, a lot of, a lot of, I mean, Florida hasn't had many harsh lockdowns but you know my wife and i have done a lot of major trips and so on so it stayed positive that, that way well you've sounded that you have been purpose driven and you have you know kudos to you because you know i mean it's so easy to be distracted by the politics and all the noise we've had in the last couple of years so congratulations on doing that um well thanks Vinny. i actually did you know this i spent three years in asia before the pandemic kicked off and so um, it's funny how being removed from American politics was actually a really nice and refreshing thing. And coming back in, I realized that didn't need to be a big part of my life anymore, right? That you could you could stay kind of above the noise um, with thought leadership and really directing your energy toward making life and work better for people. You know, I mean, it's interesting to see that Charles Phillips told me his son was in deployment in Japan. And he came back after a couple of years there and right in the middle of the pandemic and said something similar. He's like, you know, dad, what are we, what are we bickering about? My God, I've just come from other part of the world. This is, this is still the best place in the world to come back to. I'm amazed we're bickering so much. So I'm glad you have a positive attitude to that. Well, let, let's go back to, give us some major takeaways from a business perspective that people, business people will get from your book. Yeah, of course. So so we know today, I think there are 4.3 million people that have quit their jobs, right? And whether you call it the great reshuffle or the great resignation or, um, you know, there's disruption in the marketplace. And there are some things that businesses can do. We just talked about the four main concepts, the four main elements of employee experience, and that's purpose, employee agency, belonging to a community and feeling valued, that recognition, knowing that what you're doing, recognizing employees in meaningful ways so that they know what they're doing is good and right um, and appreciated. And, and while those four concepts are really important, there are some foundational elements that are really important as well. Uh, the first is authentic leadership, having leaders that behave in ways um, that's sincere and in alignment with their intentions and, and with the promises that they make, the, the kind of say-do ratio, doing what you say you're gonna do. Um, the second is having a little bit of empathy for uh, the well-being of your employees, 
And so, you know, I think that we all know that well-being and mental health is very important today, but how you execute on that, it's an important foundational element to having a great employee experience. And then the humane use of technology. I think today we, we throw technology at any problem without thinking about how that's going to be received. Oh, there's self-service everywhere, but can we really um, think about how much self-service we're giving to employees? And if, you know, there may be some services we need to provide them as well. So given that you and I are both in the technology space, let's talk about how technology can help with, you know, improving the employee experience and, you know, all the new, all the changes, the mass resignation or the fact that they're moving away from traditional employer relationship. Talk a little bit about how technology can help our transition into this new world. Sure, absolutely. You know, technology can actually drive human connection. You know, we're talking over a collaboration platform today. That's been something that's really proliferated over the last few years. Um, what employees want and need, you need to understand that as a business leader, as a manager. How do you get that information? Well, technology can help you achieve that as well. We know that many businesses have to change the way that they do business in order to survive, right? So over the course of time, any business needs to evolve and change to keep up with market trends. In order to do that, they need to reskill their teams. They need to give um, employees the opportunity to change career paths, learn something new, do something new that contributes to the new focus of the business. And so we talk about at Success Factors internal talent mobility uh, within the context of a of a technology solution called Opportunity Marketplace. So Opportunity Marketplace is a solution that helps reveal to your employees um, new job opportunities, new learning experiences, and experts in that field so that they can make that shift that's necessary for your business to be more agile. Does that make sense? Yep. How about uh, you also have something called WorkZone. How does that play? We do. So WorkZone is a great collaboration tool as well. It's um, it's something that basically brings you um, access to all different SAP solutions and even solutions outside of SAP in a single place. So, uh, so that you can both you know, do your onboarding training as a new hire and also order your laptop from the same user experience. We, we love WorkZone. We think it's a great um, way to bring together a single user experience across SAP products. Well, so you mentioned authentic leadership. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, leadership during the pandemic, I heard people say, well, you need a wartime attitude because this is a un uncharted waters, right? Especially now we, we, we are hearing much more, well, we need a wartime leader because of what's happening in Ukraine. What What's your idea of authentic leadership? You know, I think the definition of leadership and the need that people have, the needs that people have in their leaders are changing. And I sincerely believe that people want leaders who are authentic, who show that they're human. Sometimes in the past, you know, I think our wartime leaders might have been confident and the people who knew everything. We wanted to know that you knew everything as a wartime leader. And I think today's wartime leader needs to show that they respect the team intelligence more than they do their own intelligence, right? Um, that, that they understand that the, the group can be in a diverse group of people even more so can be more powerful making a decision than a single human making a decision on their own. And so authentic leaders model these great behaviors, model behaviors like showing that they're human, showing that they don't know it all, but that they are willing to learn and listen and grow together um, as a group. Uh, we need more leaders like this that, that empower their employees, that uh, recognize the value of team members who bring hard messages to the table, and that also tell their own stories, you know, in powerful ways so that people can model their behaviors after those stories. You know, in the book, you bring out the concept of a storm home, mm -hmm. right? Explain to viewers what you mean by that and how does it apply in a corporate HR setting? Sure, I'd love to. So um, storm home is a, is a concept that was actually um, developed a long time ago. It's a psychological concept of, you know, when there's disruption, change, difficulty in your life, having some place or someone that you go to, to feel comforted, to feel safe. Um, it, it's often in your mind that you feel that safety. Um, you all, obviously, you, you know, you need the physical security and safety, but, um, but often we just need someone to, to be that knows us. Um, a place where we can feel known and like we're accepted. 
Um, so this storm home concept uh, plays out at work all the time. And, and I think as business leaders, we should take ownership of this idea that work can be a storm home. So let me explain to you a little bit what that means. Um, how many times uh, have you heard of an employee or maybe you yourself dealt with something that was very difficult, maybe a death in your family, um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe just uh, something that didn't go right for you financially that was very, very difficult, very, very hurtful um, to you. And somebody said, hey, take the time that you need to go solve for that. Um, I know I experienced this when my dad passed away. Everybody said, hey, go take the time that you need to, to grieve and to deal with your family. And I said, you know, after about a week of dealing with the details and spending some time with my family, I needed work. I needed to come back to something that was uh, predictable, that had a little bit more structure, and then honestly got my mind back um, into purposeful activity rather than um, you know wallowing in, in the sadness that I had. And I think a lot of people see work that way as a place that they can go escape, a place that they can find structure and people that know them and a place that they can add value. And I think as leaders, we should provide that storm home and, and work can be a storm home for many people in challenging situations in their lives. And I think we should, we should work harder to create those environments. Go back to the mass resignation. Mm -hmm. One of the things I've, I heard Jim Cramer talk about is how we've moved to a micro cap. He called it micro capitalism. He says, you know, a lot of people who are leaving aren't necessarily going to your competitors, but they're starting their own businesses. I mean, GoDaddy announced a real spike in new websites. Uh, Etsy and Shopify have announced a lot of new merchants. How can I mean, how can corporations compete against that entrepreneurial um, energy that seems to have, that pandemic seems to have generated? Well, I think that within any large corporation, you have teams and tribes and and groups of people where that still exists, right? That spirit of innovation, that sense of community, that sense of belonging, and even that concept of storm home. And companies who empower this, who allow you know, their managers and their leaders to get this right, they'll be able to compete just as effectively um, in this world against the startups. There's, there's challenge in the startups too, right? There's, there's risk um, in those environments. And so you know, sometimes a corporate can have the ability to do both, provide the safety and security, as well as the innovative, psychologically safe environment. I mean, you know, to me, to me, it's a fascinating sociological trend when the pandemic has scared the hell out of some people. And here are young people who are willing to take a leap. God knows what they think they're jumping into, but they seem to be willing to do it. So that's a kind of an interesting paradigm we've entered. Um, Jill, does your book look at the growing trends of automation or you know some other talent trends? Sure, it looks at um, technology in a number of different ways. One of the things I talk about is just being intentional with your use of technology, right? When I talk about the humane use of technology, it's, uh, it, it's really don't just implement technology for technology's sake. Know why you're implementing that technology and know the value it's gonna bring to your employees. Think about that actively and then track it. Um, and then toward the end of the book, there's a part that's, that's so what, and it talks about companies that have done these things well, applied these principles, applied technology, in order to achieve not only great employee engagement, but also um, as an outcome of that, uh, great revenue growth and, and incredible productivity in the market. So lots of good things toward the end of the book that you can share with your CFO, um, people who might not believe as much in the uh, trend toward creating great employee experiences uh, so that they'll believe, believe that it's, a, it's an important part of business success going forward and business sustainability. Well, do you want to make a final plug for the book? What, why else should people, I mean, you've made enough enough points, but for the laggards, make, make, make a final push. Yeah, you know what? For the laggards, it's a fun read. It's an easy read. It's something you can, you can cover through in a couple of days. There are some little cards at the back of every chapter that are take this with you. So if you, know, if you are getting lazy with the reading, you can just go straight to the back of the chapter and see, um, see what you should take with you from, from that segment of the book. Uh, you can find it on Amazon, on Goodreads, any of the online book retailers. And um, I'd love to get your feedback or a review on Amazon. I want an autographed copy first. It'll be on the way, Vinny. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jill.